cards if you are new to Heartland or if you need to update any changes. Um, we want to pray for you as well, so please write down your requests on the back side of the connection card and place it in the offering basket at the back of the sanctuary. Also, today we are having Communion Sunday, so please grab uh, those items as you enter or you can get those after announcements. Another reminder that we have FIT from 9.30 to 10, which is called Family Intercession Time. We, um, today we had three prayer warriors in there praying for the needs of our Heartland family or members of their family as well, and all are um, welcome to come and help us pray for those. We have many Bible studies um, happening. Buzz Burney is leading a Bible study on Tuesday evenings from 7 to 8 in the Heartland Fellowship Hall. Um, Buzz Burney is also uh, doing a Bible study on Thursdays for lunch. and a uh, So it's grab a lunch to bring with you or just come to the Kingdom Campus office, which is on 8th Street. The study will be from 1210 to 1250 on Thursdays and will be making sure that it's over at 12.50 so you can get back to work. And that Bible study is titled, How to Be a Successful Follower of Jesus Christ by Greg Glory. Ladies, we are not leaving you out. Please join Pastor Marcella every other Wednesday evening to dive into the Word. We will be meeting this Wednesday, September 22nd, from 6 to 8, and we will have a light dinner for you so you don't have to worry about that as well. So in order to have enough food, please, if you plan to come, you need to RSVP to either myself, Pastor Marcella, or the church office by this Tuesday. Um, the study will not be a series, so if you miss one, it doesn't matter. You won't need to catch up on anything. So please join us for a great fellowship and studying his word. There will also be a phone message going out to remind you as well about this Wednesday. Also on Wednesday evenings at 6.30, Dale will be teaching a study called Unlocking the Mysteries of Genesis. If you were able to attend his last study, you will know that you will come away with so much knowledge of God and his creation. Strong in science, strong in faith. This groundbreaking series presents the science of creation like you've never seen it. Also, last week, we had the pleasure of having a speaker from Rise Up Barton County, and their event that she was talking about is on Friday at 6.30 at the Jack Kilby Square. So Heartland would love to be a part of that, and we would like to help them with this event and provide them with at least six dozen home-baked cookies individually packaged. If you would like to help in providing the treats, please contact our church office, and Lori will uh, let you know all the details. We would also, because we were the only church that responded, like to show up in support and help those who are going through recovery and show that we care. Um, please attend this Friday 6.30 at the Jack Kilby Square to help those as well. We, this year we will be having a trunk or treat again, and so we will need a lot of candy. So when you're at the store and you think about it, if you could pick up a bag or two and leave it in the tote in front of the Welcome Center, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. If you would like to be involved in the trunk or treat, there will be a brief Mond, uh, meeting next Sunday, September 26th, following the church service. Please come with uh, your great ideas and any questions that you may have. There will also be a business meeting immediately following church services today, or no, October 3rd? Today? Today. So all are invited to attend this very quick informational meeting. So please stay for just a few minutes. There will also be a fun family uh event for Heartland's family, which is October 16th, and it will be at 5 p.m. at the Kingdom Campus. I can't wait to play Pastor Troy in pickleball. The competition's on, so I hope he's ready and he's been practicing. Should be a great time. I hope you have a blessed week.
Good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing this morning? Good? Amen? Amen. And even if you came in with a broken heart or you're not doing good or something's heavy on your heart, we do know that God is good and he is worthy of our praise. And it's not about us here today. It's about him. Isaiah 42, 8 says, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. He is a powerful God and he is so worthy. He is our victory. He is our Adonai. He is our master. He's Elohim. He's God. He's mighty. He's the most glorious God. He's head over all principalities. He's God of gods. He's God of strength. He's our refuge. He's our helper. He's our merciful God. He's the Lord God of truth. He's a faithful God. He's our deliverer, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, he's our healer. Kadosh, he's the holy one. He's the shalom. He's the Jehovah Shalom. He's the God of peace. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is worthy of our praise. He is high and exalted. Let's just worship together. Let's just give him the glory that only he deserves, and he will not share his glory with anyone else. So let's just stand and let's just worship the Lord this morning with all your heart. A God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. A God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. When he rolls up his sleeves, he ain't just putting on the ribs. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his lips. Our God is an awesome God. The Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for the reason that he shed his blood. Victory for 
Father, and I ask as we are in your presence, God, that you open the eyes of our heart and our ears to the message that you have, God. Give us a fresh revelation to for today of your word and what you want us to hear today. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I was sitting over there and the Lord started to speak to my heart when my granddaughters came and sat beside me. Are we teaching them to worship? And I saw a video sent from my hi son. I saw a video that my son and my daughter sent me and they, they were raising a hallelujah in their living room and Marley and Anna Lee have their hands up and they're praising God and they're worshiping the Lord and it says, train a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. Amen? I'm going to tell you something else today. God gave me the word in January about the preciousness of life. This is what we're fighting for. This is what Texas is fighting for right now. Let every children be born that's in the mother's womb. It's not our job to take life. It's our job to support it and love it and nurture it because this is what you get. Every child is important. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, God. Morning to morning we see. God, you, you make the sun rise and you make the sun set. And you train the hearts of men. Father God, we need much training. We need to know much about your love, God. And so, Lord, I pray today that you send the power of the Holy Spirit to this place. And you're already here. I pray, Father God, that, that we would do more than tickle ears, that we would worship you and glorify your name in all the earth. And I pray we would receive you today, God, and we would love you today, God, and that you would heal our hurts and heal our sorrows and take our pain. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're going to go into a time of communion, so if you didn't get a communion cup, Raise your hand. I know they're going to share a short video here, um, but Steve would be glad uh, to pass out some cups. He may need some help passing those out. So come here, Emily. She's gone. good with the electronics. That's why God gave me Steve. <laughs> uh, I do know how to text and email though. How are you guys today? What's God doing in your life today? What's he doing, Brian? He's blessing you today, isn't he? Amen. And we, God told you it was coming, didn't he? But you had to walk the walk and go through those trials and those storms, and now he's turned the events of your life into something so much better. God wants to get you to the better. Sometimes it's a choice, though. You don't have to, to leave the better when you serve an, a God that knows everything about you, and he has the answers to your problems. God says to walk in his joy in the presence of his light. We have a God who likes to light up the darkness if you'll let him. You never need to walk in darkness. When you come face to face with the living God, there's no reason to have fear. There's no reason to tremble. 
there's only peace. We serve a God who, who gives unconditional love. We serve, a, we serve a God that when you're broken, he takes you and holds you close to his heart. And he says, I love you. I don't know what you're going through today, but he does. And that's all that matters is that he does. Not that Pastor Troy knows. I can't do nothing for you, but Jesus can. And I can tell you about Jesus, and I will. I can tell you that he loves you so much that he doesn't want you to hold on to the things of the past. He wants you to cut those things loose and go into the future. As we step into a, a time of the communion table, as we remember what Christ has done for us, I, I want you to consider that if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you ask him into your heart that you ask him into your life, that you ask him to forgive your sins. And if you've done that, then you can take part. You don't have to be a member here today to be a part of God's table. It's not right when you cut people out of God's table. That's between you and Jesus. So today, tell the Lord that you love him. Stop for a moment and, and just let your mind rest and, and, and let God have your mind and let him have your heart. And, and if there's something that you need to ask for forgiveness for, then, then ask it now as we take communion. But what I want you to do first is say, Jesus, thank you. Can I hear that out loud? Jesus, thank you. And we honor you today. God deserves to be praised. He deserves to hear a thank you. And realize that, that there's nothing that you've done that can keep you from the love of Jesus. But the enemy will try to tell you so. I'm going to use a scripture this morning that's maybe a little bit different than, than what I, obviously what I normally use. But I want to go to Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to talk later today about tear down your idols. But, but listen to Corinthians chapter 10 before we take communion. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Therefore, my beloved, free from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless it is not the communion of the is it not the communion of the blood of Christ the bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ for we though many are one bread and one body for we all partake of that one bread observe Israel after the flesh are not those who eat of the flesh sacrifices partakers of the altar what am I saying then that an idol is anything or what is offered to idols is anything Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You can partake of the Lord's table and of the demons' table. Paul's saying in Corinthians, he was talking to the church that they were worshiping false god. They were, they were worshiping idols. Before you take communion today, ask the Lord, is there any idols in your life that you need to let go of? What Paul's saying is, is that we need to place God number one. We can't come to, to Jesus' communion table and serve him and then also serve man. Let your idols go. Jesus wants to heal you this very moment of the things that you're dealing with. Jesus is wanting to break the curse of idols in your life. He's wanting to, to break the curse of sickness in your life. He's wanting to break the curse of hurt and pain in your life. And Jesus said, by your stripes, I am healed. Chapter 11 in Corinthians. And on the night Jesus was betrayed, he, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave thanks and he said, take, eat. Do this in remembrance of me.
And in the same way, he took the cup. And the cup resembles the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for the remission of sins. And he said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, verse 26, you will reclaim the Lord's death till he comes. What are we supposed to do when, when we take this cup? What are we supposed to remember? We're supposed to proclaim. We're supposed to tell about the Lord's death. And when you come to the Lord's table, Jesus said to do this in remembrance of me. He said, Troy, tell the story about the blood of Christ sets all people free. Look at the cup and make it a reality of Jesus' blood. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Life is in the blood. Life is always in the blood. And, and Jesus shed his blood, and then he rolled the stone away. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Children's Church, children, you may be dismissed over there. If you're visiting today, you're more than welcome to send your children back there. Man, God loves his children. We serve a powerful God. I'll say it again. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who sent his son named Jesus Christ to set us free. God wants so today for you to tear down the idols in your life that you come so close to him because he's already close to you. Those who draw near to him, he draws near to. Sometimes life can, can send these curves, balls at you that you can't even seem to swing at. For some people, it's been a very hard week. And I heard a story this week that just broke my heart where there was a mother of children who was killed in a car wreck. And I said, God, why? I had a classmate from college die this week just out of the blue. And I said, God, why? 
we always seem to hit God with the whys and, and what the Lord says to me, he said, Troy, stand on what you know to be true. That in my house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Troy, stand on the truth of the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ that those who, who live and die in me shall live forever. Stand on the finished work of the cross. Jesus said it is finished. God also said to me this week, Troy, don't, don't go with the crowd. Just because there's a bigger crowd doesn't, doesn't mean we go with it. Sometimes when we're in high school and college and middle school, we want to go with the crowd. But it was the crowd who crucified Jesus. Don't go with the crowd. Stand on what you know is, is right. And when the wise come and the hearts are broken, know that the lamb who was slain, the great I am, is still in charge and it still loves you and still loves your family. The enemy came to kill, still and destroy in John 10.10, 10, but Jesus came to give life more abundantly. All I can tell you today for those people that are walking through, through death, that through family members that have passed away suddenly is that that Jesus was here and he was also crucified but he beat the grave and he conquered death and because Jesus died we must also Jesus didn't promise this perfect world without pain and hurt because the enemy brings that at us the enemy it says he's there to kill still and destroy and and when we see people killed in car accidents, we go to the why instead of saying, Jesus, you said in the last part of that verse that you came to give life more abundantly. And those who die in Christ have this an abundant life in the kingdom of heaven that I don't even have words for. Billy Graham said, when I die, I'll be more alive than I've ever been. I believe that today. I believe that when Paul said to die into Christ is the gain. So don't let the why become greater than the faith of Jesus Christ. Don't, don't let the why destroy your belief and your faith in what God has said. You know what? Don't let the why blame God. Don't blame God for the pain that's in your life, the hurt that's in your life, the trials that's in your life. Don't blame God. While we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. God's tearing down the idols in your life through his love. He gave us a way out when he went to the cross. fly up here buzzing my head see what the enemy tries to do he tries to come on the other side of the brain and disturb you over here no, I'm not going to let the fly win I'm going to walk over here <laughs> God's always at work he, he, he's always at work I want to go to Exodus chapter 20 starting starting right there Exodus chapter 20, starting with verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, not serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me. Hold that up there, right? To those who love me and keep my commands. Who, who is he showing mercy to? Those who love him. And what else? Those who keep my commands. In the book of John, it says, those who keep my commands love me. We have to get in the place where we're following the commands of God, and it starts with 
thou shalt not have no other gods before me, what are you placing God before God today? God wants to be first in your life. God should be first in your life. There's no points for second place when it comes to putting God second. There's no good thing for you when you place God second. I was amazed at how this sermon came about. I was uh, talking to someone who had a, who had a dream and a vision, and, and, and they came to me and they told me about this, and then and then Pastor Marcella and I were talking about this, and, and, it, and God just kept sparking my interest in my heart, but I just kind of set it on the shelf. I just kind of put it right there, and, and then God brought it to life again in my own heart. And at 3 o'clock, was it Wednesday morning, he woke me up. And I got to be honest with you, when he wakes you up at 3 in the morning, your idol becomes sleep. So you know what I did? This is kind of funny. I was like, well, maybe I drank a lot of water and I just woke up because I got to go to the bathroom. You do that when you get my age. So I'm thinking I'll just lay here for a little bit and maybe I'll just go to the bathroom and come right back and jump in this nice bed. At 3.20, I go, all right, because he wouldn't let it go. Now, I shouldn't talk to God like that, but you know how you are when you're half asleep or you're wanting to go back to sleep and you would rather sleep than talk to God. So I got up and I went out on the couch. I had to get far away from my bed. And I'm sitting there at 3.20 in the morning and, and I start to read the word. And, and then I just sit quietly and I'm praying in the spirit. And I said, Lord, why, why am I truly up this hour? 5.30, is that not good enough? 6 o'clock, is that not good enough? And he said, he gave me the word Slavery. I said, Lord, slavery, what, what, what does that mean? What, what are you talking about? He said, Troy, you, you, you talk to Marcella and, and you talk to Cliff Ann. I'm just going to say it. We talk to Cliff Ann. Bless Cliff Ann's heart. I know she doesn't want praise, but she gave me this word this week. God gave me the word through her. I, I never want to take credit where credit's not due. God uses women in the church to teach us men who sometimes walk in pride. And I sat there on my couch, and, and, and God said, Troy, just like you were told, out of that, that dream that you were told about, the, the, the slaves out of Israel, they, they brought their idols with them. They're a slave to the things that they brought with them on their journey. And that still continues today. And I sat there, and I, I was starting to have this vision of, of this huge boulder, and it was in a square shape, and it was to be stacked on the next one, and the men were supposed to stack it on the next one and the next one, and they were really heavy, and, and I don't know if it was building a pyramid, but I saw this stone so heavy that, that at least four guys couldn't lift it, and it was going to break the backs of men. And God said, Troy, that's what I'm trying to show you, that slavery breaks the backs of men. It breaks their hearts. When you're in slavery and you're worshiping false idols, slavery keeps you captive. And Jesus was sent to set the captives free, was he not? And those who Jesus sets free are free indeed. The thing that, that is so hard to understand is that when Moses led them out of the promised land and he's standing there by the Red Sea and their backs up against the water and Pharaoh and his army are coming at them when they needed a way out, God supplied it. When they needed a way out, God supplied it. But he waited for that moment to build their faith and he parted the waters and they walked through. And not only did they walk through the very thing that initially enslaved them, God destroyed in the water. And Pharaoh's army drowned. And that's the picture that God's sending you today, that, that he wants to, to, to drown your false idols, that he wants to take whatever idol you have and throw it in the Red Sea, so to speak. 
He doesn't want the enemy of false idols to cross over into the promised land with you. He's destroying your enemies. And I find it truly amazing that, that one of the idols that we have is bickering. When you're in slavery and you're in bondage, you're, you're told what to do every minute. Your schedule is set. They tell you what you can eat and when you can eat and how much and how hard you're going to work. And you're to the, to the point of exhaustion. Slavery exhausts you. We in America do that today. Even though God is part of the Red Sea and, and, and we've walked through to, to, to greener pastures, we, we still complain, we still bicker, and, and we don't wait on God when there wasn't enough food for a little while and water. They bickered and, and they didn't trust that the God who parts the Red Sea wouldn't feed them. So many times in, in our lives, we put things before God that we should not. And I'm asking you today what that is. I'm asking you today to, to take a look at your life and, and lay down your false idols. Now, you, you may not be worshiping a golden calf in your living room. But the enemy creeps in and brings in these things that become more important than God in your life. And, and your time is one of them. Your, your, your time is stolen from you and God in the mornings where you worship and you pray and you set that precious time aside. Your, your sleep has become an idol just like it was for me. Your food becomes an idol. May, let me ask you, when's the last time you fasted and prayed for three days? Oh man, Troy, I like to eat. That's so hard to do. I don't want to give up food. Do I really have to? Let me ask you, is that an idol? I think food is probably the hardest thing to give up. It is. Some of you guys have already thought about where you're going to eat at after church. Food can become an idol. And what God's saying is, can you give that up for a little while and put me first? And God rewards those who seek him diligently. There's never been a time when, when I have fasted and not heard from God. Never. There's never been a time when I fasted and I haven't been blessed. There's never been a time when I fasted and I haven't felt the loving power of Jesus Christ so much more. Now, God hasn't changed. He just doesn't miraculously show up for me because I fasted. He's, he's seeking after all of you in that way. But, but when you tear down your idols, when you lay them down, you hear God more clearly because he's already speaking. Sometimes God tell, tells us to give somebody a, a, a word of knowledge. He tells us to prophesy over them, and we, we do that here. We'll lay hands on people. We'll pray for them, and, and God will give them a word. And, and, and sometimes that's well needed to encourage the faith, to build a person up. But let me ask you, should you, should you rely on the pastor to give you a word from God, or should you get that yourself? I can't live your life for you with Christ. Now, I'm, I, I want us to get that clearly. I'm trying to encourage you that, that giving up your time, if you don't, can be an idol, that, that you need to walk before Christ and seek out his voice and, and listen and pray and, and read the word of God. That's how, without me getting up praying, I wouldn't hear him. But when you seek after him diligently, he, re he rewards you with his voice. He rewards you with his love. And I don't want you to feel like you can't ever come to me for prayer and ask for a word from the Lord. That's not what this is about. It's about you going directly to God yourself and spending that time that he's asking for. 
You want to know what else God did before I preach this sermon this morning? I was driving here to the church. And I drove by one of my competitors' houses, who's in the lawn business too. And God said, Troy, go around the door, go around the block, and go up and knock on his door. I said, what? He said, go up and knock on his door this morning and tell him that everything that he's been praying for, God's heard, and that there's plenty for both of you, and that you love him, and you tell him this morning. Tear down your idol. So I went and I knocked on his door this morning before I came. And when he opened the door, you should have saw his face. He said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I have a word from the Lord. God told me to tell you that everything that you've been praying for, he's hearing and, and he's about ready to answer that prayer and turn your situation around and that I'm here to tear down my idol today because God told me that there should be nothing between you and me, that he's got more than enough. And he stuck out his hand to shake my hand and I pulled him in and I hugged him. Are we tearing down idols? Is there more than enough? Does God own the cattle on a thousand hills to where we can go to people that are our competitors and love them and lead them to Christ? And, and he knows Christ. But the enemy will do anything to come between Christians. The enemy will do anything to come between believers. Are we willing to tear down our pride, which has become an idol, and humble ourselves and seek God's face. Sometimes God makes you have courage to do those things. God wants you to, to step out into the Red Sea right as he's parting the waters. He's wanting you to have that faith when, when Joshua and them crossed the Jordan that, that the priests had to carry the Ark of the Covenant first and the water receded when they took their first step. God's waiting for you to take the first step when it comes to tearing down your idols. Jeremiah chapter 25, starting with verse 6 through 13. Do not go after other gods to serve them and worship them, and do not provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, Hold that right there, Lori, and I will not harm you. Now, wait a minute. Does that, does that say God's going to get angry? God says, do not provoke me with the works of your hands. You guys, I know one thing that makes God angry, and that's when we worship things other than him. It's kind of like don't poke the bear. Don't wake the bear. When you worship false idols in your home or the things in your life, you're poking the bear. God says, don't provoke me with the works of your hand. Next verse. Yet you have not listened to me, says the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to, to your own hurt. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around. And I will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment, a hissing and a perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride the sound of the milestones and the light of the lamp. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. That's a long time. Then it will come to pass when 70 years are completed that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, and for the iniquity, says the Lord, and I will make it a perpetual desolation. So I will bring on that land all my words which I have pronounced against it and all that is written in this book which Jeremiah has prophesied concerning all the nations. And I want you to think about Jeremiah prophesied probably something like 23 years and, and he had to walk in it and, and these things weren't happening yet that he was prophesying. He had to wait and he had to walk through that and sometimes he set out on an island all alone is what it felt like. But he trusted God that the words God was giving him would, 
would come to pass, and they did. And the Israelites were carried off into exile by King Nebuchadnezzar. And, and who was among that bunch? The, the false idols and, and the things that they were worshiping affected even those who weren't worshiping. Daniel had to travel along. What I'm trying to say is don't allow your worship of false idols and sin to affect your family. Because it rains on the just and the unjust. Prepare your homes in such a way that the enemy cannot even step a foot in. Guard your eyes. What are you watching? What, do you, what is it that you can't shut off? I believe that in the homes of America, our TV has become a false idol. And you, you say, well, Troy, I, I'm not worshiping it. And doesn't the false idols, aren't they made by human hands? Is a TV not made by human hands? You should be able to shut the TV off and spend time with God if he so asks you to. You know, I'm not saying that I'm one that doesn't ever watch a ball game because I do. But what I'm saying is if the TV is stealing all your time and replacing, you're replacing your time with Christ and you're replacing your time with prayer with the TV, then that's became a false idol. We need to tear down our idols. We need to rid ourselves of the things that, that keep a, a built relationship with Christ. Matthew 4.10 says, You must worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Luke 16.13 says, No one can ha serve two masters. And John 8.36 says, Therefore, if the sons, who the Son makes free, you will be free indeed. We read that in Corinthians that before we took communion that, that you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and Satan. And slavery gives us this mindset that, that, that keeps you in, in, in captivity all the time. You've got to learn to have the renewing over your mind over the things that place God second and put him first. We are a slave to our own habits. Our habits often keep us from, from walking closer to God when, when we're not willing to change because this is what we've always done. Pull up Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's a message of deliverance. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to who? The captives, and recover the sight of the blind. Our slavery and, and worship of false idols makes us blind. He's not talking about being physically blind. He's talking about us being spiritually blind. The meaning of liberty is the state of being free within society from oppression and restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life. At one point, the Israelites weren't satisfied about being brought out of Egypt. There was talk that they wanted to go back because their minds held them captive. They, part of them was so oppressed that they couldn't bring themselves out of it. And I'm here to tell you today that there's only one person that can bring you out of oppression, and that's the name of Jesus. The enemy wants to, to make your mind captive. He wants to make your, your life captive to him and the things that he wants you to worship. But when you sink in and you find the love of Jesus Christ, it'll set you free in ways that you've never known before. Allow God to be first. The definition of idolatry is a slave to the deprived ideas his idols represent. Let me say that again. An idolater is a slave to the deprived ideas his idols represent. What are your idols representing? 
don't let the things of this world become greater than God because we're going to lose them all. You're not going to get to keep your money. You're not going to get to keep your home. You're not going to get to keep your fame. And any idol that you're stepping into pulls you away from Christ, destroys an area of your life. Maybe you're, you're fighting sex today. Maybe sex has become an idol bigger than God. And if it's outside of marriage, it's wrong. Don't ask God to, to bless you in that when you're going to walk in sin over here. But the good news is all of these things can be fixed. You can lay all those things down at the altar of God and you can walk away from them and you don't have to carry them and continue to put yourself in slavery. Worship team, if you'll come forward. Remember that the number one thing that slavery does is take away your freedom. A slave to your idols takes away your freedom because those who are in Christ are free indeed. Now I want you to think back of the story of 1 Kings in, in chapter 18. Elijah's sitting there and I like to say he's adding fuel to the fire, but he was adding water to the fire. All those priests were worshiping a false god called Baal. And they were trying to call down fire and they were spending a large amount of time doing this and nothing was happening and Elijah was, was starting to make fun of them. And Elijah said, hey, it's my turn. Bring out the water and pour the water on the wood and, and make the trench full of water and I'll show you what my God will do. And he calls down the fire and God immediately sends it and burns up the sacrifice. And what happened to all those priests worshiping Baal? They were destroyed. You guys, serving false idols and false gods brings death. God said you can't serve two masters. So I'm going to ask you today that, that you pray today, that you pray in this moment and say, Lord, make the idols that are in my life known to me now that I might tear those altars down, that, that I might set those things ablaze, and that I might serve you only, God. Is it my TV? Is it a sports team? Is it food that I can't give up when I'm fasting? Is it, my, is it money? Moses gave up a lot to take the Israelites through the desert. And it seemed like every time he stepped away with God that he came back down off of Mount Sinai, they were worshiping a golden calf. I don't get that. They just saw God part the Red Sea and do many other miracles. It seems like that we, we want to continue to make God walk in miracles or we won't believe. God's already done the one miracle and that's the only one he ever needs to do and that's when he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for us he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross and conquer death and he did that and he rolled the stone away and he woke up and he came out and that's the only hope and assurance and that's the only miracle that we should be focused on and yes God will do many more miracles God will make the blind see and the lame walk and the deaf hear. But ask yourself, what are your idols today? And allow him to remove those from your life. Yeah. 
Let that tear down your idols. When you see how much Jesus loves you, it's easy to tear down those idols. When you see how much he loves you and how he wants to be drawn in close to you. If you need prayer today, I'm just going to tell you to, to catch one of us after the service. We would love to pray with you. Find somebody that... Pastor Marcella and Mark, Buzz and Cliff Banner here, some of the board members, they'd love to pray with you. Now, I want you guys to be honest with yourself for a moment. What, was there anybody else besides me that needed idols tore down today? Allow God to do that and let him set you free. Now by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I pray blessings over your life. I pray healing over your life. I pray that you do rest in the shadow of the Almighty underneath his wings. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.